Jeez, there's all kinds of people who've been here a long time. Wow. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this very special day. I see a lot of people who haven't been here for a while, and it's nice to see you all. Uh, we have the centering thought. We will be singing together. One one eighty eight one eighty eight is the hymn Come Come no, Whoever no, You Are. No, no, no. No? One eight eight. That's what I said. One eight eight. Or look at the screen. Barbara will do an introduction. morning again. Thank you all for being here. I, we've got even more people here than we did before, and I hope we have quite a few people on Zoom. Welcome to you all. Summit is a liberal religious community bound together by shared principles drawn from world religions, 
humanist teachings, nature and science, philosophy and personal practices. We aspire to be a religion of love and inclusion. The mission of Summit is to commit ourselves to building a more compassionate, just and sustainable world. If you are new to Unitarian Universalism or to Summit and would like to know more about us, we invite you to go to our website, summituuf.org, click on the visitors button and follow, fill out our online connection card. Someone will follow up with you. We have a few announcements today, um, quite a few. Um, let's see. Let me... <laughs> Well, um, Jim Weed, would Jim Weed like to come up and start it off and then I will finish up. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to see everyone here today. It's great to have Casey here, welcome. Um, I, have a uh, announcement as a co-chair of the welcoming and membership committee about a uh, upcoming event it's the getting to know us that's going to be an orientation for newcomers to summit where you'll have a chance to learn more about our fellowship as well as unitarian new universalism in, in general so we'll be meeting in the uh well probably in the library if you have enough people we might shift it to the the salon, but have a relaxed conversation about Unitarian Universalism, Summit UU Fellowship, their histories with members of the Welcoming and Membership Committee and other people uh, of, of Summit. That will include uh, our minister, Casey. So if you haven't really had a chance to meet her, great chance. And leadership of summit will be there as well and this meeting will happen september 24th at 11 30 p.m and am yeah anyway <laughs> i don't know i mean if you're a party animal you never know so so anyway uh i can confirm now that drinks and croissant sandwiches will be served again we found the last time that bribing you with uh, uh, food is really a good thing to do and there is a possibility for families with child care that, that that child with children that child care will be available but let us know ahead of time so i can ask my daughter to uh be there because it would be really unfortunate hi abby so updates as well as contact information to RSVP can be found in the weekly e news, as well as the September issue of the scene. Thank you. Okay. The biggest announcement of the day is this is the first day of our new minister, someone who we've been waiting for for a long time. And we look forward to an exciting new journey with her on our spiritual path. So we want to welcome Casey. Um, that's the big news. And along with that will come some other changes, such as we'll be reviving the Covenant Group. Um, um, am I did something just happen? No, okay. We're uh, reviving Covenant Groups. And uh, if you would like to participate in Covenant Group, activity please contact Casey directly and she's going to be organizing that um, this time around we also um, would like to make a request for religious education volunteers we actually are you know this is again a, a new part of our journey and um, we do require a bit more volunteerism than we've had in the past couple of years so we need um, uh, people to step up for religious education and also we are going to for, as far as covenant groups go we also are going to need some facilitators the more facilitators we get the more covenant groups we have we can have 
and um, and that would be a good thing. So if you're interested in facilitating a covenant group, also get in touch with KC. Okay. Um, and also keep your eyes peeled for an adult RE survey, which should be coming out on Wednesday. Um, we just want to collect some information about how you feel about that. So that's it for that. And I also would like to say that for more than 10,000 years, the Kumeyaay people lived on this land, stretching from the shores of the Pacific Ocean, south to Ensenada, east to the sand dunes of the Colorado River and Imperial Valley, and north to Warner Springs. We acknowledge that this fellowship resides on unceded Kumeyaay land and honor the continuing presence of the Kumeyaay Nation. I forgot. Now we'll have the chalice lighting, and um, you. I'll re since I'm standing here, I'll do it, and you can light the chalice. Okay. Give thanks. Feel alive, and know. As we light this flame, we remember friends and loved ones near and far, and we give thanks. As the fire burns brightly, we open our minds and hearts to new ways of being and we feel alive. As the room glows with warmth and kindness, we extend our circle ever wider to welcome those who want to come in, and we know love. Please stand if you're willing and able, and we will sing the Yu Yu hymn in Spanish and then, then in English. Pastor KC will do the reading. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So enthusiastic. I love it. It is so wonderful to finally be here in person with all of you and to see you at home on Zoom. Whether it is your first visit or your 5,000th visit, you are whole you are holy, you are loved, and you are so welcome here. Our reading today are words from Matrisa Tet Gustio Gallardo entitled, There's My Temple, and I'm sorry, I have the worst pronunciation with names sometimes. There is my temple, believer, unbeliever, or wild one, you are welcome. We have no definition of who we are but human. We have no code but that of respect. We have no creed but that of equality. There is my temple, identity seeker, sinner, stateless or not, you are welcome. We have no constraints on expression but space. We have no code but to listen to poetry between the silence and the surrender. There is my temple, nature tripper, urban dweller, or saint, you are welcome. How shall we divide the world but by our breaths? 
We have no pope above us, no infallible bull. We have no judgment, but in terms of harm. There is my temple. History maker, marginalized, unorganized, you are welcome. We have no covenant among us, but mutual assistance. We insist on no assumptions and doubt moral facts. We are free to theorize with emotion and call it hope. There is my temple, unbecoming, expert, robe or disrobe, you are welcome. We have no dwarfs or giants, Goliath fell long ago. We have no seal on revelation, tentative is truth, led by your desires and served by your power. There is my temple, funny, temperamental, shy or wise, you are welcome. There is not one way of being human, not even for Superman. We have no world but that which we together create. There is as much wisdom in harmony as in dissent. Welcome to worship. And our time for all ages. If our young or young at heart would like to come up front, you are welcome to. Let's see if my Kindle gives me my actual time for all ages today. What a travesty it would be if it doesn't. Come on, come on, I'm done with come on. Come on, kids. Don't be shy. This is a special day, you guys. Come on. Yeah, no, you gotta come on. Yay! We're young at heart. Thank you. Kindle doesn't want to give me the library book that I downloaded the other day. We can just talk for a few minutes and that you works. guys can ask me some questions and I can answer them for you. That works. Because I think the kids. It's not working. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> this is what happens when you have live, live things going on. Hey. Yeah, I love you all too. So, one of the really important things that Mary and I want to work on this year is we want to make sure our young ones feel like they are a part of this community. One of the things that we find is really difficult sometimes is that we want things done a certain way, but maybe our kids don't know how to do them that way yet. It's important to remember that our children are not the future of our congregation, but they're a part of it right now. Each and every one of these young people in front of you are part of our fellowship. So it's important that we learn from them as much as they learn from us. So do you have any questions at all? Anything at all, I'll do my best to answer. The meaning of life might be 42, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, that was a completely arbitrary number. You have no reason for taking that. You just thought it was fun. <laughs> Is there anything you guys want to learn this year while we work together? Sure. What's something cool you did at your last I have not had many kids yet. So because I started my ministry journey when um, right after the pandemic started, uh, I was accepted to seminary in December of 20, uh, 2019. I started that fall. So everything was online. So I had no kids with me almost at all. At my internship site the last two years, we had a few kids, but they were kind of few and far between because they have sports and things like that. I think my favorite thing that I got to do with them though was actually what you're all doing today is covenant writing. So I got to see what kind of things were important to the little ones as far as how they wanted to be together. If you were a Jedi, what color lightsaber would you have? <laughs> <laughs> I like to think I'm pretty tough, but I think I'm a Jedi at heart. Yeah. So. What color lightsaber would you have? Can you repeat the question, please? Oh. She would like to know what color lightsaber I would have if I were a Jedi. <laughs> oh, I'm about to disappoint all of you so much. I've never actually seen all of the movies, so I don't know the difference in the colors. I it just doesn't matter. Just pick your favorite color. Okay, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what it means, but. Because there is a purple lightsaber. There is a purple lightsaber. Maybe a white lightsaber. 
And white lightsabers? Yeah, that means if someone has a white lightsaber, they're a Jedi Master. Oh, oh I'm far from a Jedi Master. <laughs> but it sounds like a good thing to Aim for. try to be, right? Yeah. To be the best at what we do. Mm -hmm. Say your name, I know who Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have to love it, but there's something to be said about salty and sweet. There's a sermon in that somewhere. <laughs> Fun fact, there's a sermon in just about everything. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your childhood? Uh, a little bit about my childhood. Um, I, you'll find out very quickly, I'm a bit of a talker. My parents used to tell me that if I ever got kidnapped, they'd bring me back because I talked your ear off. <laughs> You're in the right place. Right. <laughs> um, but I'm one of two children. Uh, my brother and I are not very close these uh, many, many years, but um, youngest of two, and I've always really enjoyed um, acting and performing. So um, you all benefit from the fact that that's what I've done for most of my life, because I can stand up here in front of you and do this, and it's not making me shake in my boots. So. <laughs> And theater is how I got into ministry, which we'll talk about a little later. We are. We are going to put on a play for our um, around Christmas time. We're going to do a children's pageant about the island of the misfit toys. Because <gasps> I think it's a pretty good allegory for who we are as a family. Did you dye your hair purple for Christmas color? Uh, I didn't realize I liked purple so much until after I started dyeing my hair purple. <laughs> One day I showed up at church and someone said, Casey, is your favorite color purple? I said, no, why? And they looked at me head to toe I was in purple. <laughs> what, what's your doggy's name? Lilith, Zeus, Vulcan, and Artemis. Uh, Vulcan and Zeus will be moving down with me when I have a place to stay. Uh, Artemis and Lilith will stay with my parents. And we also have a cat named Persephone. Clearly there's a theme. <laughs> and I don't want to keep our little ones from their covenant group or their, their covenant building together. So we will, so I, do we sing our children out? <coughs> how, do we, how do we, excuse our children? Okay. Yeah, so we lead the affirmation and then we get sung out. So, can all of you guys come and stand up for me? Thanks for being patient and being <laughs> flexible. Okay, so we face. Yes, you are tall now. Okay. So our affirmation is we are Unitarian, Universalist, people of open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. Now we get sung out. We could sing out the old song. Yeah. Yay! We have a song, number 311, which would be in the gray hymnal, I believe. All Let It Be a Dance. This is our thing to sing. You guys can stand up. So let's ride. Okay, if you're willing, yes. As you are willing, like you are able.
I would like to take a moment before we move on to honor the memory of Paul Vale. We know that many of us over the years, since we have been so blessed to have Mary with us, many of you have had the opportunity to know him just a little bit. And as I've gotten to hear about him over the last week, I have heard such wonderful things about a man who loved butterflies and loved people. And we can hope, we don't know what happens after we die, none of us do. We can hope no matter what happens, that we carry our loved ones in our hearts and we carry them in everything we do. So we will extinguish our, ch extinguish our chalice briefly as a reminder that sometimes the candle of life may be brief. We will have a moment of silence in memory of Paul. light our chalice as a reminder that we do carry our loved ones in our heart as we carry this flame with us. Please join me in a time of silent prayer, meditation, or reflection as I read words from Tony A. Larson. Spirit of life, we come from different spaces. Some of us arrive alive with hope and joy. Some of us come in loneliness or fear, looking for friendship and support, but not sure we will find it. Someone here is thinking of breaking up with their partner or is afraid that their partner is thinking of breaking up with them. It's such a hard place to be, a place of fear and hope, anxiety, but perhaps also relief a wrenching spot where feelings war with one another. Someone else is glad and secure and so grounded in their relationship that they feel like they could achieve almost anything with the anchor of that love that gives roots. Someone here is trying to quit smoking or thinking about it and finding it one of the hardest things they have ever had to do. Someone here may be addicted to cocaine or another drug and would be so ashamed if anyone else here knew. What would they think of me? And yet this is who I am and I am here too. Someone may be facing an unwanted pregnancy. What do I do? Can I handle giving birth? Can I deal with an abortion? What will my friends really think? What do I think? Someone else wants a child, wants a child so badly and feels an emptiness in their heart because this desire cannot be fulfilled. Others are here of no particular intense feeling yet still understanding what it means to know pain or joy. We arrive from so many places, it almost seems as if each of us came to see a different movie but we find ourselves by chance in the same theater, each hoping for something to feed our spirits, yet wondering how we can all be fed when who we are and what we are seem so different. Spirit of life, help us see that as different as we are, we are all welcome here, that we all have something to offer one another and that our very being here is a gift. Help us see that as individual and as unique as we are, there is common heart beating in our breast. And we are not really separate at all, merely fragments of one common beautiful vessel. If we could just learn to put the pieces together. Blessed be and amen. Today you heard and sang a beloved Unitarian Universalist hymn, 188 in your gray hymnal. If it's got less than four digits, it's the gray hymnal. Come, come, whoever you are. Indeed, the namesake for today's sermon. Although the hymn we sang today differs somewhat from the original poem, which has been attributed to possibly erroneously, Islamic scholar, theologian, and Sufi mystic Rumi. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, 
lover, of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vow a hundred times. Come, come again, come. What strikes me the most about this ancient reading is the notion that we needn't be whole or perfect or even good to be welcome. This poem dates back to the 13th century, so this type of welcome clearly is no modern concept, but it's one that I think we forget from time to time. No matter who you are, how you are, where you are from or why you come, you are welcome here. But what exactly do we mean when we say welcome? What does welcome even mean? About eight years ago now, I was cast in possibly the world's shoddiest production of Dracula. The script itself had been piecemeal, cobbled together by a theater owner who didn't want to pay royalties on any particular script. The cast and director were fantastic, if I don't say so ourselves, and our shared dismay at all of the issues we faced created quite a fellowship between each of us, and we all felt a measure of deep comfort with each other. I remember one day speaking loudly and assuredly about the non-existence of God, comfortably proclaiming in clear terms that I was an atheist and I liked it that way, thank you very much. Our Dracula, looking every bit the part with shocking blue eyes and porcelain white skin, smiled gently, nodding serenely at my words. That's interesting, he said, tilting his head to one side. You know, I'm a minister. It's been eight years since and I can still taste my foot in my mouth. <laughs> with quite vivid remembrance. Two years would pass with Jason sending gentle Facebook invites whenever a subject he was preaching on crossed his mind as something that I might be interested in. Come on, he'd say, we're your people, I promise. And frankly, I thought about that as something of an insult. As someone who had been told they were going to hell in three different languages, by four different denominations, and by more people than I could count. The last thing I wanted was to have church people. <laughs> but there was a voice in my head that told me if Jason was half as good at this minister thing as he was as an actor, maybe it wouldn't be so bad to sit through one service. And despite a quiet consideration that maybe one of these days I'd go check out these Unitarian Universalists, my boyfriend Dan reminded me I am far from a morning person. Eight months later, Dan died unexpectedly after a prolonged illness that got very bad very quickly. And it was Jason and the Unitarian Universalists who had a life vest to spare as I tried desperately to tread water in the oceans of grief I was experiencing, although not before attending a service with my arms crossed tightly over my chest and a very suspicious eye. We are so glad you're here, they said. I had no idea who I even was in those early days, and yet to them it didn't matter. They saw me as I was, exactly in that moment. And by God, they loved me anyway. Come, come, whoever you are. This past Friday was the sixth anniversary of my first grief group at UUC Fullerton. And it was without a hint of exaggeration to say that I would not be here today standing before all of you if it had not been for their genuine heartfelt welcome, their willingness to love me in my most anguished moments. They didn't try to fix or heal or change. They just tended the weeds in the fragile garden that was my heart, and they helped pave the way for me to feel whole inside of my brokenness. And it was made wholly possible because they foster a culture of welcoming. It's not a perfect culture of welcoming, 
They fall short sometimes, and I know it can be painful for people who have felt that welcome to be inadequate. But they try, and they mean it with every ounce of the community they create together. And it's an admirable practice. And I tell you this story for a few reasons. Yes, it's my first day of hopefully many days in the pulpit here at Summit, and it only makes sense for you all to get an understanding of who the heck you hired. I have every intention of remaining your minister for as long as it makes sense for all of us. And this story is at the heart of my calling to ministry. And it's at the heart of the things that I want to tend and grow here with all of you. Second, I want to share that I have seen that same culture of welcoming in this very room. When I met many of you in June, I was welcomed with opened arms and on more than one occasion, someone said with a smile, Casey, welcome home. And finally, without a doubt, our welcomes can always go further. I try to reflect and model a culture of not just welcoming, but radical welcoming in my own ministry. It's part of why I show up every week in exactly all of the ways I intend to. Physically, I present with every ounce of authenticity that I could possibly muster, clothes and hair styled in exactly the ways that bring me confidence and joy. I hope that someone wanders in one day and upon seeing this authenticity from the pulpit realizes there is a place for their authenticity too. I hope that when you see me all before you, you realize that every stitch of you has a home here. The parts of you that you like, the parts of you that you don't. I choose my words very carefully. On average, my sermons clock in at about a ninth grade reading level. And that's with purpose. If someone with little more than a high school education walks through our doors, I want them to hear and understand my words and know they are words crafted for them. I hope you all know that these words were chosen with you in mind on your most desolate days, your most celebratory, and I choose them as such to speak to your minds, your hearts, and your souls, as well as those of the people we have yet to meet. When we welcome people, it should be a welcome for all, not just those who think, look, and act as we do. Which will home for us. While all are welcome, not all thinking is welcome. We are a faith that not only believes in, but cherishes the inherent worth and dignity of all people. It is in our principles. It's our very first one. And it's one of the connecting threads between each Unitarian Universalist congregation and fellowship and community. No matter what we believe individually, each and every Unitarian Universalist believes deeply in that principle. And I will go a step further in saying that we uphold not just the dignity, but the divinity in each of us. We are all a part of this universe, and each of us has an irreplaceable part to play in it. We also recognize that communities and politicians with loud voices proclaiming wrongly that some of us matter more than others. All are welcome. Not all thinking is welcome. And a home of radical welcoming must protect those of us with marginalized identities from harm. And that's why it's an expression of our faith, I think, to live into our principles in such a way that leans into the work of liberation. We may not share a common idea of who we are, how we got here, if there's a god or a goddess, or the world turns on the back of a tortoise. 
We may not use the same sacred texts if we use any at all. We may believe we go somewhere after death or we may believe that we go nowhere. That each of us is expected to adhere to. But we are expected when we choose to covenant together in this faith community to accept each other together as we are and encourage each other on our own individual paths to truth and meaning. Come, come, whoever you are. I was speaking with someone yesterday and indeed I told them that I would use this story but I didn't get express permission to use their name so I'm not gonna say. But just remember, a lot of things that you might say might end up in a sermon, so be careful. <laughs> Always with permission. We discuss the idea of radical welcoming and what that means for us. And this person said, it's like getting invited to dinner. There's, I'm having a dinner party, come if you'd like. There's, I'm having a dinner party, I'd like it if you were there. And there's, I'm having a dinner party, what would you like to eat? And those are all very different invitations. We also discuss the difference between tolerance and acceptance. Tolerance feels conditional. You can be here, I guess. Acceptance is loving. You belong here just as you are. Full of grief, full of joy, feeling whole and understood or broken and unseen, questioning, curious, seeking, wondering, all are welcome here. Today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, you are all welcome exactly as you come to us. So I ask you, as this community who do we want to be? Are we a community of words and tolerance not yet ready for the kind of welcome the world needs? Or are we a community of deeds and acceptance making space joyfully for each other and for those we know not yet? I've heard people tell me, we want to see Summit grow, we want to see new faces, we want to see new families. But if we want more travelers on this journey towards truth and wholeness and justice and liberation, we can't simply wait for them to find us. We must prepare the way for those seekers who are not yet in the room with us. How do we reflect to each other and to others that we are ready to be a truly welcoming, radically accepting spiritual home? We have to make the commitment right here, together. We need to see it reflected in the words we say, the books we read, the leadership we choose, the speakers we invite. We must be willing to challenge each other lovingly and with compassion on the things we think and the ways we engage with each other, about each other, and with those outside these walls. We must know we are not perfect and that we will absolutely fall short. We must recognize that the path to becoming whole together is not an easy one to take and to be a place that lives into radical honest welcoming we are going to make mistakes along the way. We know that impact is often greater than intent, but we must also vow to return to each other to nurture our covenant and work to grow in our understandings and be willing to reconsider and reflect and work together. Radical welcome, radical acceptance, these things cannot be waited for. We cannot hope and wish and wait for them to show up on our doorstep. Our faith is in a moment of great change. This summer, we elected the Reverend Dr. Sophia Betancourt to lead our faith into the next facet of our future, a queer, multiracial daughter of immigrants, a scholar, a teacher, and a theologian. 
We are in the process of considering the adoption of a new article for our Unitarian Universalist bylaws, a process that is fraught with worry and excitement. And it's one of those places that we find the heart of our faith, so it's understandable why this is difficult. We have the opportunity as a community, as a faith home at large, to make some really major strides in how we show up for the world, how we show up in the world. It's up to us to help create the world of joy, hope, and equity that we seek. We cannot wait for it to find us. Maybe that's because it doesn't quite exist yet. We must work together across races, religions, politics, identities, abilities, all for a better future. One where we all have a place of love and care. We don't have to understand each other perfectly or agree unequivocally, but we do need to honor, support, and cherish one another. And sometimes all it takes to start that is hello. Come, come, whoever you are. Come, yet again come. So may it be, and amen. Thank you, Casey. So good to have you here. Amen. Okay. It's time for the Sunday morning offering. Your offering is a gift that provides Summit UU Fellowship the financial resources to help build a better world together. The smallest gift is welcome. For those of you on Zoom, the link can be found in the chat box. Please select the Sunday plate option to allocate your do donation to the appropriate account. Barbara? It's all of us. It's all of us. It's the choir. So it's the yeah. Please rise as you are willing and able, stretch your legs and sing, come and go with me. It's a number 1018 in the teal hymnal.
<laughs> if we want to talk about welcoming, it's in our music, too. Okay. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Sometimes the most difficult word that we use is hello. More than forgiveness, more than vulnerability, just saying hello, allowing a person into your space, into your life, takes an act of great courage. Courage that I see in our Unitarian Universalist spaces every week. To be a faith of liberation-minded people means that we must be willing to say hello. May we always seek to be a welcoming community full of love, compassion, and caring. May we strive to create the spiritual home that we long for. And may we always, always be radical in our invitation into this place. Amen, shalom, salam, ashe, namaste, and blessed be. Go now in peace. May the light within you be a blessing to the world. Okay. Would everybody like to join hands in the closing circle song? If you feel like it, we've got a big group today. A big circle, more or less. <laughs> Together, hand in hand, in fellowship we stand. Before we go, we'll just share the glow of standing hand in hand. There will be a community.